What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerdcast for the first episode in our Stalker Shadows of Chernobyl playthrough. My name is Splattercat and I'm happy to have you here today as we check out Stalker with the Complete Overhaul 2009 mod installed. If you missed Stalker back in the 2007 age, this is a game, it's a first person free roaming shooter where you wander around the area surrounding Chernobyl after it's meltdown and you are a stalker. It's sort of like a ranger mixed with an illegal salvager and so your job is to go into the radioactive wasteland called The Zone and recover artifacts, figure out your history and also fight with bandits, avoid getting arrested, and all of that kind of fun stuff. If you miss this game, I highly recommend it, but you should also install the complete mod because the vanilla version was very, very buggy and had a lot of problems. With the complete overhaul mod, there are still some bugs in the game, but it's very much sort of like a gem that I find a lot of people don't know about. This game was highly requested, and so since I had a big hole in my schedule, I figured why not? Let's play Stalker together. And so without further ado, let's start the game up and we'll see what we can accomplish in this first episode. Let's do some cinematics, shall we? We're going to be playing on Stalker difficulty. I always forget that they give you a difficulty setting right here. That's because this game is like viciously difficult. And so I'm playing through personally on Veteran right now. And I'm definitely hitting brick walls every now and again where I feel like I just haven't progressed enough in order to play the game properly. So for the interest of this playthrough, it's going to be a normal walkthrough. Still, I am not completely experienced with the game. So this is like semi-blind. I've played the game since like 2007, but it's been a long time. And then B, I've never actually completed the game. I usually just free roam around until I have super awesome gear and then I end up quitting eventually. So there it is. Let's play the game. seems to be alive. What a lucky guy. At least death would have saved him from the dreams. Let's go and see what value Sidorovich will put on your head. What have you got? A body. It came from the death truck. It's got the mark. Well, you know the drill. Leave him on this the... This is a live one. Bullshit! You are lying! Let the zone take me if I am. Put it here! I think, for this one, I can give you... So, Marked One, I saved you. And I'm not going to pretend I did it to win favors upstairs. You do some jobs for me, and we're even. Besides, keeping you busy might be a good way to deal with your amnesia. And I'll see what I can find out about your problem. 
Okay, and so welcome to Stalker Shadows of Chernobyl. This is the game, and it looks pretty good for a game that's almost 10 years old. I'm always impressed the next time I boot into the game, like, I leave this game on the shelf, and every time I come back, I'm always impressed with how decent it looks for how old the game actually was, and considering the small size of the development team. So anyways, this is Sidorovich. He's going to be our boss from now on, sort of our handler. His dialogue right there, you may have noticed that little cut. It's because he always bugs out right there for me, and he never finishes his dialogue. It doesn't matter, because if you actually talk to him with the F key, he repeats it anyways. So you'll get the general deal. Let's go. The choice is yours. Either I brainwash you like I usually do with all the rookies, or I treat you like a real stalker and I give you a mission straight away. Eh, I like my brain dirty. Treat, please. Got a job for you, Mark One. I want you to find a stalker called Nimble. He was carrying some very important information. He disappeared somewhere near the bridge. Find him. Dead or alive, I don't care. I need the flash drive with the info. Visit Wolf from the local camp and ask him. He certainly knows where that guy can be. I hate it when people appear and diss me. That's all for now. Bring me the flash drive and we'll consider the fact that you've partially paid me for saving you. You know what? I'm pretty sure it wasn't you who just like hiked my ass all the way in from out in the hills. I'm just saying. You were doing like the poultry enthusiast thing right here while the other guy was hiking me in. I'm not, I'm not trying to split hairs. I'm just saying. Alright, check all the cabinets. You can use the F key to interact with stuff, so I highly recommend that you do that. In our inventory, we start out with a sleeping bag. We start out with a little bit of armor, which you can take off just in case you want to walk around in what looks like some kind of like Russian military sweater. However, that'll mean that you have no resistances. And a little bit of resistance is nice. I mean, it'll help out. We can be resistant against burn, electric shock, rupture, impact. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. And then they put a little picture next to it, too, just in case you weren't getting it. So bulletproof tends to be the most important one in the early game. But later on, some of the other ones will become important as well. It's the best we got, so let's get riding. We have no money, as far as I know. Our jacket's worth a 1,000 rubles, though, if you want to sell that off. Eh. Well, good hunting, stalker. Alright, well at least he's sending us away with a wave. At least he's a friendly fellow. He wasn't friendly to that chicken though. That chicken was having a bad day. So there's a lot of stuff in this game that I'm not gonna know. I don't know where all the secret stuff is. I've played this game a lot over the last 10 years. Like, I've played it four or five times a lot of the way through. However, I'm just, I'm just telling you right now, if you're gonna be one of those people that's like, Oh, you missed the RPG inside that building. Eh. I just, I don't know everything about this game, and so that's all there is to it. We can turn on stuff with L, so there's our light right there. We are going to be using that quite a bit. The game does have its freaky portions where you can't see shit, and there's things running at you and screaming and trying to kill you. The game does incorporate the supernatural, and so if you aren't ready for that, if you're faint of heart when it comes to, like, scary oogie-boogie stuff, like jumping out and trying to scare you, this may not be the game for you as you get further in, but for right now, it's mostly going to be humans that we're dealing with. There's vodka inside of there. I remember that being in there, and then what we can also do... I don't have a weapon yet, never mind, I can't break crates. There's a bunch of crates in these buildings that you can break open for some, like, basic gear. Let's go talk to Nimble's boss, who's over here. So, Sidorovich is gonna be our boss for a little bit. He sent us to find Nimble, who has a flash drive, so it stands to reason that tracking down Nimble's boss will be a good place to start. This guy's getting his jam on. I put in a request for I Want It That Way by the Backstreet Boys so that I could press all the stalker ladies. Unfortunately, he didn't know it, so, you know, I can't be like... Oh, is he gonna sing now? Well, I was gonna be like... You me, me. Yep, the ladies love that. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Let's talk to his boss, Wolf. Hi. Why are you here? I need to see Nimble. You know where I can find him? Nimble got a raw deal. His group was attacked by bandits a little ways from here. All they could do was send out an SOS. It looks like most of his pals bit it. My guys told me that the bastard that did it are now at the old car park, the one across the road. So the, there's a lot of English in this game. A lot of the things are poorly translated even after the mod. I'm just going to skip over it and I'm going to sort of like paraphrase it because my brain, if I read this directly, my brain like stalls every single time I hit the bad grammar. And so I'm just going to, it's not me being, it's just I have to do this. And so you don't rescue your own people from prison? Not very friendly. Or are you just too weak? I'd break your fucking nose for that, but what's the point? It's not that simple. I got too few people, and even most of the ones that I have are rookies, and I can't take the risk. If we lose this camp, things will get even worse for all the stalkers out there. So what about you? If you are too scared, I won't let my pride make me say no to a helping hand. You want to help me deal with the thugs? You think I could do it alone? Nah, you stand no chance on your own. My scouts are good soldiers. Right now, they got the place surrounded, so together you can make a run for it. What do you think? You got the balls? Hell yeah, whip them out and put them on the glass, son. Let's do it. And so he is going to give us some basic gear. Guys, I'm sending someone your way, so wing it. You may attack if necessary. Over. Okay, so there it is. 
let's go break this crate that we found back here. In the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, you will see some things that are important. We've got our health bar, we've got our armor bar, and in between that, you've got a yellow bar, which is our stamina for when we sprint by holding down the X key. We can hold down control, which will get us low. We can hold down shift and control, which makes us get even lower. Get low, get low. And so if you want to have, like, an enthusiast, I don't know, limbo career while you're out here in the zone, it's definitely possible. I don't know. Andati limbo stick. If you really, really want to. I don't see too many limbo sticks, though. We've got this barbed wire stick. That'll definitely encourage you to get lower. I like to bother this guy. You can sit here and just be like, unz, unz, unz. Oh, yeah, they get... I've got a weapon out. If you got a weapon out, they get grumpy with you if they don't know you. Only friendly characters will allow you to point a weapon at them while you talk to them. Don't ask. I don't know. We can also break through these barricades right here, which... The universe doesn't really like that much. Let me see if I can right-click this down right here. There we go. And break those. If you right-click, you get that across hand like slash, like stabby thing right there. If you right-click, you get that slash right there. So just in case you were wondering, there are different types of stabs. I don't think they affect anything. I don't know. I've never tried to stealth kill somebody in this game. I don't even think that that's like really a thing you want to focus on. Open the cabinets because I am a horrible, horrible housemate. Is there anything in here? Nope. Why would you mate with a house? I don't know. Normal people just can't satiate me. Let's go and let's find Nimble. The first thing we need to do is we need to talk to a guy over here who got jumped by the same group of bandits. Additionally, we need to go inside this building over here because it has medical supplies. And so if we bust open this crate on this side, there it is. We can get a bunch of band-aids, which are important just in case we start bleeding later on. And given my proclivity for being shot repeatedly in this game, I figure we'll probably spend a lot of our time oozing fluids. Let's walk off to the left-hand side over here, and there's going to be a wounded guy that we got to talk to, and we're also going to get buzzed by a helicopter. A very, very loud and obnoxious helicopter. In that direction, the game is free-roaming to an extent. It kind of uses the Guild Wars system where you've got large zones, and then there's going to be, like, teleportations in between them. So you'll walk through a door and it'll be like, do you want to zone into X zone? And you'll be like, yes, I do. But the zones themselves are fairly large. That way there's a military camp. If you raid the military camp, you can get some pretty good gear, but it's a risk. Oh yeah, he also gave us a gun, by the way, in case you were wondering. So we've got a Makarov right now. Take a look at our inventory. So we've got two band-aids, we've got some vodka, we've got ourselves some caffeine, and then we've got ourselves a med kit and a Makarov and a sleeping bag. So there it is. Let's go talk to this gent over here. I'm going to wait for the helicopter to buzz us, though, because it's super loud and it, like, ruins everything. I think it comes from, I don't know, over there. There it is. Hey, you. Be quieter. That's right, you heard me. While we wait for the helicopter to go away, there's some stuff inside this little portable mobile home over here. And so, if we go inside, we should be able to grab ourselves some goodies out of the crates that are stacked up. I don't think there's anything in there, but this one right here in particular has all kinds of good stuff. And so it's going to have a silenced Makarov, it's going to have a med kit, it's going to have several boxes of ammunition and three bandages. It may not seem like much, but that's actually a pretty good haul for the early game right now. And so that's the thing that you don't want to miss if you're going to be in there. There's some mutated dogs down the hill, in case you're worried about that. The game does have a stealth system. So on the left-hand side, let's say that... You see that bar on the left-hand side of our map in the top left-hand corner? That's the amount of sound that we're making right now. In addition, the little meter marker down there is how far we are from the green arrow that's pointing towards our next objective. We press the P key, it's going to open up all kinds of random UI stuff. It's going to have our missions list, it's going to have the map, it's going to have our diary with our personal notes, just in case. It's going to have our contacts, so as we meet people and we help them, they're going to get reputation, they're going to be happier with us. This game has a ton of different endings that depend on your reputations and your faction and stuff like that, so it is worth paying attention to. Too. We've got our ranking against all the other stalkers for right now. Apparently, Philia Pushkin is way better at it than us, the marked one. Over on this side, we've got our personal stats with how many people we've murdered, because I guess stalkers like to keep track of that in an easily traceable, you know, police-findable object like a PDA. And then we have our Stalkerpedia over here, where it teaches you about stalking. That's about it, though. we got to help this guy, so we'll pick up this med kit off the ground, and we got to give it to this wounded guy over here. Help me, brother. Take the med kit off the stiff. I can't crawl that far. Oh, fuck! The pain is too much. I'm dying. Are you alive? I'm okay. Bleeding like a stuck pig, though. Give me a med kit, will you? Here you are, my good man. Enjoy your med kit. You're okay, you know that? I'll be sure to tell everyone at the camp that you helped me out. How come I don't have a balaclava mask? I want a balaclava mask. I have one in real life, but I want one in game. Thanks, friend. A little longer and I'd owe you one. What the hell happened? We were coming back from a scouting raid, came across some gangsters. One of our guys got killed right there. They grabbed Nimble because he made up a nice story about a cache full of artifacts. I played dead and that saved my ass. I need to see Nimble and I'm going after him. You want to come with? 
Oh man, right now I couldn't punch my way out of a wet paper bag. I gotta get some of my strength back and return to camp. I'll let everybody know how much you helped me though. Thanks again. You see his attitude is friend now. That means we can point guns at him and stuff and he doesn't get angry at us. Because that's what friends are for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you tell me something interesting? Uh, he doesn't have anything. Sometimes you can ask the same generic questions Ultima style to like everybody on the map. And sometimes they'll give you like interesting little tidbits. I'm just gonna use my loud ass Makarov and save my silence one for later. For right now, there doesn't really seem to be a whole lot of reason to swap over. I mean, the other one's okay. I don't think it does more damage or anything. I mean, we could take a look right here. Got ourselves another energy drink off the ground because nothing says wet my whistle like finding something on the ground and drinking it. So it's got a little bit of accuracy. Let's find out here. It's actually quite a bit more accurate. The handling is worse. The rate of fire is better. Actually, maybe we should swap that in. Whatever. All right, so we'll use the silence macro for right now. Over here, you'll find like a wet pile of just dog mash. I don't even know what that is right there. It appears to be the remains of some kind of like Yorkie or something. I don't know. And then if you break this open, it's got an ammo box, and you are going to need it because, by God, you are going to go through a lot of bullets in this game. A lot of things are done going to get shot, so Nimble's homies are over here. We'll go talk to them. Put the gun away, though, because he gets grumpy if you point it at him. Pipe down, man. Let me fill you in. <laughs> that mouth. Rah, 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 rah. Hello, Wolf has already sent word of you. You got any questions? Yeah, how many bandits are in the camp? Seven or eight. Two by the gate, two more in the building to the right near the fire, another two in the one to the left. That's where they're keeping Nimble. Somebody usually hangs around the yard as well. Seems to be about it. Shall we say a prayer and go? Hell yeah, round up your men. Square away your ammo, all those other shape-related euphemisms. Let's do this thing. Here, sent us some support along with the order to attack. Time to move on and be heroes. Is that really why you're doing You're rescuing your friend so that you can be a hero, not because he's your friend? I mean, I don't want to judge your motives right now, but I'm just saying I'd rescue him because he was my homie, not because I expected anything from it. Bunch of buildings over here. Our target is going to be on this side. Let me turn off my flashlight for right now because, as you might note, the sun is shining. Therefore, I have no need for a torch. So let's move through here. I'm actually going to try and run past here. You hear that beeping? That means there's an anomaly around, and it's right there. And it will blow your ass up if you step on it, so be very, very careful. The Chernobyl meltdown has caused there to be all kinds of like weird supernatural thingies around. The homies are going to go that way and attack from that side, so I like to sweep around this way and clean up from the back while they create a distraction. Different people like to do this part in different ways. It's just the way that I prefer. You should hear them popping off in a little bit. Now, characters in this game are irreplaceable. When somebody dies, that's it. They're gone forever. You're never going to see that character again. So, the game can play out very, very oddly if, like, a quest giver gets killed. Typically, there are ways. Okay, so the fight is going. Let's be careful over here. We're just going to wait and see what happens. Somebody should come out of this building, at which point we'll try and get him. Maybe. Maybe not. Okay, so there's a guy over there. Oh, no, he knows we're here. Okay, so never mind. That was a bad plan. Don't get shot in this game. It's very, very easy to die in the early game. I think that's him right there. I can't see through the bush, though. The first time I've had this problem. That guy said shaking and bacon, so he knows what's up. I enjoy bacon. I also enjoy shaking my ass on the dance floor. Did I get that guy? Yes, I did. Oh, we're being fired on. Let me get inside the building. It only takes a couple bullets in this game, so I tend to be very, very paranoid about getting shot. That guy, I don't know where he's going to pop out. Ah, we missed him. All right, you can hip fire in this game like CSGO or Counter-Strike. You can also, like, aim down sights if you want to. It all depends what you prefer. The developers have left room for you to play the game however you want. I tend to play it Counter-Strike mode just because it's faster and it's easier to get things done. we got a guy on this side. I don't know if he's coming out or if he's going to try and shoot us through the window. It could go either way. Let's just get out of here. We were bleeding for a second. If you looked at the bottom right-hand corner, you might have saw a little blood droplet. It means we were bleeding slightly, but it wasn't too bad because it was only in green, so we should be all right. Let's check our corners very carefully. It only takes three or four bullets in this game to put you down. Shit. Well, at least I saw him. Oh, he ducked for cover. The AI is pretty smart in this game. If you've never played it before, the AI does some pretty smart stuff. It'll actually duck and take cover. It'll try and circle around behind you. If there's multiple bad guys, they'll actually coordinate and try and take you out. It's pretty cool. It's really, really cool. And it's an old game, too. Like, some of the things this game was doing back in, like, 2007 are really, really... I'm going to get him in the abdomen. I shot him in the dick a couple times. That would have stopped me, so he's a tougher man than I am. Oh, well. And that or he's got his grin played in. I think he'll probably step back out, though. Oh, see? See how he came out a different hole right there? Instead of going in and coming back out right there, he went to the door in the back and came out just to throw off your expectations slightly. It's exactly what I don't hear a whole lot of shooting, so I'm thinking our guys must have gotten wrecked. We might be all alone. Oh, no. Okay, I don't want that to happen either. 
He's probably coming around here. I think we got him. Ah! Oh, Christ. Yeah, our guys got destroyed. Okay, yeah, they're all dead out here in the field. You see those gray dots on the map? Those are dead bodies, so we're all alone right now. And we're actually technically supposed to have friends right here. Usually they do a lot better. So, eh, unfortunately, I guess they weren't on their A game today. Let's... Ew. They're circling around to the right. I can hear that. Yep. There he is right there. And he's close enough to do some serious damage if he wants to. Which way is he coming through? Okay, I got him a couple times right there. I'm gonna try and... Oh, he went in low. Alright, there we go. Another one down. We're bleeding slightly, so we may want to take care of that. I would highly recommend we grab a band-aid right now and just sort of like bandage up. That'll stop the bleeding and get our health back up a little bit. We got a few more to deal with. Don't loot, by the way. Looting in combat is the worst idea ever. That was a horrible mistake. I shouldn't have done it. I'm going to try and let me circle around real quick because I think they've got me pretty much spanked on this side. You can reload while sprinting, but you can't fire while sprinting, so that's another little tidbit that some people may know, some people may not. Yeah, it looks like they're going that way. We may be able to get the jump on them right here. I think I hear movement on my left. Shit. This is so tense. Oh. Okay, another one bites the dust. But a bump, bump, bump. I shoot you with my Mac. There it is. And so is that the last one right there? Nope, not the last one. Oh, there's one over there too. Okay. I'm going to try and use this fence post as cover. Ooh, where is he? Okay, there he is. Come on. Got him. Right in the head. Took him out clean. Dropped him real quick. And so there it is. We've successfully, I suppose, rescued Nimble, even though all his friends are dead. Probably not going to make him super stoked. We got a shotgun right there. I would highly recommend equipping the shotgun. This game's shotguns still kind of suck by comparison to shotguns in real life, but at point blank, this gun will do work on somebody. So if you come around a corner and there's like a bandit right there... It will lay him out with one bullet. Like, he's not walking away from it, which is why you need to be so paranoid when you're dealing with bandits who have shotguns. Stay as far away from them as possible because their accuracy is terrible. However, I'm going to pick up all this stuff because we can sell it later on, including the stuff off the bodies of our comrades over here. We might be able to get ourselves a better gun, although I think most of these guys just had pistolas. I don't think anybody had, like, an MP5 or, like, an AK-47U or anything, like, or an AK-74U or whatever the hell it's called. Got that over there. This game does have tremendous, tremendous bullet physics and things like that, so it's a, it's a really awesome game. It was kind of like that first foray into making realistic gunfights and things of that nature, and so there's a lot of stuff to have fun with in this game. I'll try and point it out as we go along. We got a dead body up in this building. Yikes. That didn't go well for anybody. On the plus side, we are stocking up for the future. Be careful. That was a pun right there because technically we're a stalker. Anyways, we'll go back in here, break open these boxes, see if we can get some loot. We'll get nimble in a minute. He'll sit back there and he'll scream his head off, but honestly, nothing's going to happen if we don't go get him. Anything in these crates? Nothing in the crates for us. Well, that's just crate. We've got a little bit of fuel right there, which we can sell for a little bit of cash, I think. How much is fuel worth? I'm pretty sure like ethanol or, yeah, it's worth 500 rubles, so it's worth bringing along. Might be able to get something out of it. Got a couple of debtors over here. That guy's got red track pants. Well, damn, son, are you going to the gym later? What's up with that? Got ourselves, you might notice in the bottom left-hand corner how it's saying that there's like these red words being popping. That's because these guys have evidence of stashes inside their inventory, and so it just adds those. So now if we go to our map, you see these little marks that it's added? These locations are being populated by random notes inside the bodies that will give you sort of like these mini objectives you can go to, and then you can search them for like freebie loot and extra bullets and extra supplies and stuff to sell. Things of that nature, so lots of goodies. It sounds like we got a wounded guy around here somewhere. Oh, it's this guy. Okay, so let's put him out real quick. Yeah, that is a part of the game. There's no reason to heal that guy or help him. Like, seriously, he'll just get a- he's an enemy for life because we already got into a gunfight with him. So you might as well just put him down now or he's gonna bleed out. That's pretty much the way that it goes. 
And this, my friends, is ooh, they had vodka crates in here. Damn, I love vodka. Anyways, I this is nimble. I could never thank you enough. Well, I mean you could try. Thanks, brother. You did us a great service. I don't even know how to thank you. Listen, I need that flash drive you were taking to the trader. You have it? Yeah, I got it. Those morons didn't even do a proper search. Well, what the hell, take it. After all, you saved my life. It was well hidden, and these thugs can't frisk for shit. Thanks. Where'd you keep it anyways? Who knows, it might come in handy. I didn't keep it down there. I mean, don't worry. I've worked for the trader a long time, so I can store information safely. By the way, I told the thugs a nice little story about a cache full of artifacts, and they ordered one guy to go there. The cache exists, but it's only got one artifact. I can give you its coordinates if you want. Sure, thanks. But don't forget, there's a lot of wild animals there. Besides, the gangster they sent is armed with more than a scoop and a shovel, so be careful. Thanks, man. Thanks to you, too. I need a job. You got anything? Find the perfected suit. While I was in captivity, I heard the bandits talking about their secret stash where they keep the habar. Heard that they hid a cool coat there, and the next day some monster got his eye on the stash. He became so interested in it that now they're afraid to go there. Do me a favor and bring me the suit and I'll pay you well. Sure thing. Alright, and so there it is. We got ourselves a new quest. Let's go upstairs, we'll look around, but actually, I think we're out of time. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerdcast for the first episode in our Stalker Shadows of Chernobyl playthrough. I appreciate you being here. This is a really fun, really cool game, and I'm glad that I get the chance to show it off right now, because honestly, I think a lot of people don't know about it. A lot of people do, but I'm always surprised how few people have actually played it. So, anyways, I'll see y'all later. Hi-do, everybody.